Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is XB Walker. I will be recording some tutorials for you to teach you how to play Luck Catchers. I apologize in advance. I actually recorded the entire tutorial only to find out after 20 minutes that my mic had been turned off. So, let's hope that I'm even better this time around. Please enjoy this, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in YouTube, or you can ask in the English chat channel here. There are always extremely helpful players willing to help and willing to answer any questions. Okay, so step one, you have now entered the world. You're now here in Luck Catchers, and you don't know what the heck to do because, well, let's face it, there aren't really very good tutorials. So, that's where I come in. Step one is going to be clicking on your hangar to, s to first find your ship. Um, by the way, I, I went for humans because humans tend to have a slightly faster starter balloon, and I've already got an orc, so variety is a good thing, right? Now we're here in the hangar. We're going to click on our balloon. Now we see our balloon floating above the ground. Next, we, we need to find a way to make money. We're starting with zero gold, essentially. Of course, I have 20,000, but that's not going to be how it is for you. So, we need to make some money. Let's get a contract going here. See where it says cargo contracts? Before we actually click on this, let's go down to the hold of our balloon, which is essentially its inventory. We're going to click on that. It's going to show you the inventory for your balloon, plus the inventory for the flight center at which you are docked. Right now, it is obviously empty. We're going to leave this open and slide it to the left. Oh, a uh, pro tip, if you ever have a problem clicking on things or closing them, um, at the time of this tutorial, the chat seems to interfere with that. So your easiest way to fix that problem is to just close your chat when you're trying to work. Now that our inventory is open, we're going to go down to cargo contracts or hit the letter Q. Here are cargo contracts from Misty Baragor to Hearth. That is all that is currently available. Um, I will explain how to know where that is and where you are in just a moment. First, let's just go ahead and accept our contracts. By the way, if you're an orc, your cargo contracts will be from Steel Nargval to um, Shelter, I believe is the name of the city. So we've got 16 slots in our inventory, if you look over here, 4, 8, 12, 16. We are going to fill the entire inventory up by clicking and hitting the Enter key. Now, if you click on the contract, you can see some information. It's from Misty Baragor to Hearth. These letters, by the way, indicate where it is on the map. I'll show you what that means in a moment. Um, reputation, you get 100,000 human repu- or excuse me, 10,000? No, that's 100,000. Human reputation for finishing it, um, which isn't really true. It's, it's a lot less, but you'll see when we get there. Cargo weight, 500. Distance, 8. This is in miles. Payment is 1 gold. Insurance is 0, meaning you don't pay anything. And if you lose this, you don't have to pay anything, although you will take a reputation hit. And you need to deliver it by... It says deliver to. Uh, that's not a very good English translation. You need to deliver this by day 198 of the 34th year. We're now in day 163, so you've got lots of time. Uh, contracts tend to be about 76 hours before they expire. Um, we're heading northeast and it's a safe route. We're going to go ahead and accept and we're going to do that again until our cargo hold is, hold is full. Um, pro tip, click and then immediately hit enter. That's how you can get the most cargo contracts in the least amount of time. As so. And unlike later contracts at higher levels, these respawn almost instantly. So don't worry about stealing contracts from other players. And you can see on the right here, it says cargo moved into Sutler MK2 balloon. All right, our balloon is full. We can accept no more contracts. I mean, we can, but 
then it's all going to end up here and we're going to have to move cargo around. Let's be lazy and not do that. How about it? All right, all that's left is taking off. We're going to hit the letter A or we're going to click on this little steering wheel with the up arrow. And there we are. We are now floating above the ground doing nothing. Now remember I mentioned earlier that we would be able to find cities and I'd give you a hand with that. So on the left here is your mini map. Every capital city has three zones. So if I open my main map, which by the way is up here and it's shaped like a globe, you're going to see Baragor, Nargval, Citadel, and Stronwald. Those are the four capital cities of the game. Baragor and Nargval are fairly new as of the time of this tutorial. Uh, Nargval is the orc capital and Baragor is the human capital. By the way, orcs and humans are not at war. This is not World of Warcraft, so you don't have to shoot an orc on sight if you're a human unless you want to take a huge reputation hit. Um, and then Citadel and Stronwald are the capitals for what we call the Russian players. The Russians have been playing this game for a few weeks more than we have, so there's a lot more established economy down here, although most of the people down here speak Russian, so if you don't speak English, you might find it a little hard to live in these areas. Um, if you're from America, Portugal, um, Brazil, France, England, basically anywhere in the Western world aside from Russia, you're going to be placed in one of these two cities depending on the race that you choose. All right, enough of me yakking. You can find Hearth right here, Baragor right here. We are currently in Baragor. We need to head north to get to Hearth. Now, if I click on my map, I can click on any one of these little white T's. They represent a city location. So we've got working Baragor. By the way, the information is right here. Two miles away, we've got Baragor Bay to the south at two miles. And of course, where we are is Misty Baragor. To the north, if I click on this one, there's Hearth. That's where we need to go. By the way, the players will constantly spawn in and out of primary settlements. That's what you're seeing here. So I need to get to Hearth. I'm going to click on my little tiny balloon. I'm going to click on land. You don't need to manually fly there. That lesson will be covered a little bit later. We're going to click on land and on our mini map here on the left, I'm going to mouse over Hearth and I'm going to left click and here goes my balloon. He's now on his way to Hearth at full speed. By the way, another really nifty thing is uh, the humans starter balloon is very fast. 145 at low altitude. If you get up to 3,500 yards, which is 3.5 miles according to the game, <laughs> makes no sense, but whatever. Um, 3,500 yards is your max speed location. So if you're making a long distance journey, you want to get up to 3.5 miles and do that. Um, I think this one goes something like 160, 165 up at 3.5 miles. As you can see, our ship is just bouncing off the ground whenever it comes in contact, so you don't need to worry about taking damage. We're still full health. Um, you do take damage if you run into a cliff, however, so if you see a cliff, you're going to want to manually change your altitude before you reach it. And speaking of which, left is your manual altitude change. This little blue slider indicates where you want to go. The yellow slider indicates where your ship is currently at in elevation. Um, we're not going to mess with this right now because the autopilot is taking care of it for us. And down here on yards per minute, that is the speed at which you are ascending or descending. Right now we are negative something and it's, it's going down, meaning I'm dropping. Over here is your speed. We're going 146 miles per hour. Thrust is 100, meaning I'm, I've got full power to the engines. Think of it like a train, sort of. It's a steam-powered engine with 100% thrust or 100% uh, power to your engine. You're going to reach a top speed. It's not like it's it's not like in space where if you're doing 100% thrust, you're constantly going faster and faster. There is a limit due to air, due to the restrictions of the game. All right, over here, we've got your chat. 
Again, like I said earlier, chat is extremely useful. There are GMs usually on and willing to help others. Uh, the GMs I'm aware of are Aznet, Gummy Bear, and Metal Man, who, <coughs> excuse me, who is talking right now in chat. So feel free to ask players for help in chat if the video tutorials aren't doing it for you. Also, I strongly recommend you find a clan or a guild or at least a group of players that is knowledgeable and is willing to help you. Um, it will make this game much, much more fun to not be solo. Unless, of course, you're a pirate, in which case, go kill everybody. Okay, we are just making our way down to Hearth right now. It's going to take a little while. In the meantime, I'll take you through a quick tutorial on skills. This is your skill tree up here. It is very similar to EVE Online, where skills take time to learn. If I mouse over Strek Piloting, by the way, you can see down in the bottom right, it says it's going to take me 20 minutes to reach my next level. Roughly 10 minutes per gold cost. So it costs me 2 gold to start the skill, takes 20 minutes to finish. And 83, um, 83 times 10, that's 830 minutes, roughly 16 hours to finish an 83 gold skill. By the way, I'm currently training pilotage, uh, which will allow me to control more than one balloon. I'll cover that in my next tutorial. I've got 25 minutes left. I could rush it by paying six more gold. Kind of in the same way in EVE Online you can buy skill enhancers. Um, again, some people complain about this that it will take them forever to level, but if you're making money you can certainly bypass the whole time thing and just simply pay money to skill up in things. Or, another way to go, if you're a pay to win kind of guy, not gonna lie, I'm kind of that way, you can pay money to buy a whole bunch of gold and fast track your skills. Totally up to you, this game is actually very playable even if you don't pay to win. Um, it's very generous on gold earnings and if you're smart, you can make all the money you need without ever paying a penny. Should be noted though that um, you can sell Steam cards and make 20 cents and that's 500 gold right there. So, something to think about. Something some of my guys have done in my clan is they'll just sell random cards they've collected on Steam, make a couple bucks, and it's it's like a thousand gold right there. So, up to you though. Uh, totally up to you. Alright, another quick run through of skills. We've got pilotage, which lets you take on more ships. Exploration, which is more useful for settlements. We'll cover that in another tutorial. Same thing with planner, which allows you to build settlements. Mechanic, automatic weapons. Let me just scroll over here rocket weapons and explosive ordnance. These are all crafting skills as are the skills beneath them. Um, we've got demonology which lets you pilot higher level ships. This also goes hand in hand with the pilotage skills and those beneath it. You need both to be able to fly the higher level ships. Defense crystal. This is one of the most important skills you're ever going to learn. Defense crystals are great because when you apply one to your ship uh, a level 10 defense crystal gives you 1 million extra health on top of your ship. Anyone in game will tell you that um, repairing a damaged ship is really annoying because it requires a lot of different materials, many of which aren't very readily available. Most people just scrap their ships and buy new ones. Defense crystals is a way to add HP to your maximum, meaning you'll have, for example, let's look at our ship here. Uh, our ship has 1.1 uh, million HP if I'm reading that correctly. If I had a level 10 defense crystal I'm gonna have 2.1 million HP out of 1. Meaning I don't actually take damage to the ship until that crystal is totally destroyed. It's very useful if you hate repairing ships or you really don't want to lose a ship that you paid a lot of gold for. Okay, last but not least for skills is going to be your um, mana regeneration skills, battle magic, and all the cool magic things you can do beneath that. Dragon Call, which lets you summon any dragon within a certain distance to attack you. This is a good thing for hunting dragons or for being very anno annoying to a player settlement. Um, and then Leap, which I was sad to find out takes you in a random direction 
10, 20, or 30 miles. It doesn't actually leap you in the way you're flying, so you can't take a shortcut to where you're going. Okay, that's your skills. We have now landed at the settlement. You can see I've now increased my gold by 16. If I go to cargo contracts, it's empty because there are no cargo contracts from this settlement to anywhere else. Also, excuse me, if I click on my hangar, click on my ship, and open my hold, it is now empty. My deliveries have been completed. They are auto-emptied out of the hold. I got paid. I now have more reputation with the humans. I now have 16 more gold. From here, and probably for the first two or three runs, uh, as a new player, you're going to just rinse and repeat. You're going to fly back to where you got the contract. In our case, it was uh, working Baragor, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm going to go land there, grab some more contracts, and keep doing these runs for two or three more times until I've gathered up let's just say 30 or 40 gold. Once I've done that, I'm going to buy more balloons using my brand new pilotage level one skill, and we're gonna start really racking in cash. However, that is another tutorial. I will show you that soon as I make it. One other thing to note before I end this tutorial, your ship does come equipped with weapons. Only the ship that you start with, however. When you buy a starter balloon, which costs one gold, they do not come with weapons typically so you'll need to buy weapons for those if you want them to have them uh, the the one da the 1-10 machine gun is a very powerful weapon believe it or not um, one of the most powerful anti-dragon weapons in the game so don't get rid of these don't get rid of your ammo if you want to automate your guns you just hit the down arrow here on each of these guns until you see an A a indicates automatic fire. It will automatically fire on dragons, on enemy ships, which they didn't specify here, but this is enemy ships. It won't just shoot everybody. And enemy strekelots, or fighters as the Americans call them. And uh, by default, it is not set to shoot pirates because it will engage pirates in a safe area on accident. I recommend leaving this unchecked as long as you're anywhere near a city. We close that. Oh, and by the way, don't don't mess with the range for any of this. These are pretty good numbers, actually, except for possibly range of fire at ships. You can reduce that down if you want, but if their range is set to 1,000, they're going to be killing you while you don't shoot back. So it, it's best to not mess with this number. Okay, that is your first tutorial, folks. I'm on my way back to make some more gold and buy some more balloons. I will see you soon.